You are listening to Words with a Mad Coach. I am Mad Coach. I am Mad Coach. I am. I am Mad Coach. I am Mad Coach. I am. You are listening to Words with a Mad Coach. You back there, Ace? Yes, I am. Can you hear me, Coach? I got you loud and clear. Got you loud and clear. Good to hear from you. Um, we have not spoken publicly live in what about six months? <laughs> yeah, it's been a little bit of time, honestly. Uh, I had to go ahead and take care of a lot of stuff, army wise, and you've been doing a lot on the podcast scene, p- pumping out media and uh, all the articles you've been doing. I-, I love your breakdowns and reviews, but you know, as <laughs> me and you both know, my my, my life is a uh, a very intensive one. So yeah, I had to go ahead and get my house in order for I was able to kind of pop back out, but hey, we're right. back. Yeah, and, and, and um so I just happened to be perusing uh Instagram and was hit with that bam, just signed the contract. I'm like, what? I'm like, come on, man. Like just a couple of months ago, not even a uh, uh probably a month and a half, you were asking me about whether you should take this fight or not, and here you are taking this fight. On February fourth, like what what changed? And then how did you? First of all, let's talk about the pacing, getting the fight, and then let's talk about you signing the contract for what three fight, four fight deal. Yeah, so we have a, a four fight deal with uh with Fury. So honestly, happy for the opportunity, happy for the the, the the promotion, the level of the promotion that it is. As you know, they're trying to take over LFA spot as the, the UFC's number one feeder. So how it kind of came about was um. So um, I was infantry, uh, so I kind of got away from the infantry world, which is a lot better for my, my body. For those that don't know, I'm active duty army. I'm an officer. <laughs> so when I was over doing infantry stuff, I was almost ba- burning the candle on both ends because I had to, you know, do regular PT army-wise, and then I had an extremely physically demanding job um, in the military, the most physically demanding job, or one of the most physically demanding jobs you can have. Couple of that with fight training it made it almost uh, impossible for uh, my recoveries. And as I already came into it injured, it kind of took a lot for me to kind of just be able to maintain that level of, uh, of high performance, honestly. So I uh, took a step away from, honestly, everything for a while, got back into physical therapy, got into the recovery side of things, changed my job. So now I'm a medical officer now. A lot less taxing on the body. I'm actually in the when if I'm injured, I just go to work. <laughs> honestly, as funny as that is, I probably couldn't get a better gig for a, a person with my kind of lifestyle. So I was kind of able to calm things down on that side, get back into the uh, physical therapy, get into the rehab stuff, got into some great training down here. I'm in, uh, in San Antonio now, training with uh, with Pete Spratt. was able to really make some uh, some changes and strides in my, my striking game. And then uh, it kind of called, had a, a last minute uh, pull out, asked if I was interested. We kind of sat down with my management team and my coaches, and we looked at the guy's style, how it reflects with mine, um, the pacing of a uh, skill that he's making in his uh, leaps and bounds in, in, in regards to mine. I was like, you know what? Hey, let, let's, let's get it. Honestly, I, I think it's a great matchup. We're both uh, same record, both strikers. Uh, I think I have the grappling edge by far. Uh, so just trying to see, we got to let the cards lay where they lay. Exactly. Um, you, you haven't seen, used to be a fighter that trained with us named um, uh, Eduardo. Um, what was his last name? Man, what was Eduardo's last name? I because he fought for um Fury Fighting, and I know he's down in that way. Uh, Eduardo Rivera. Have you have you come across him? Not that I've seen, but in and honestly, I don't know what it is in the Texas water, and this is probably one of the most MMA populated areas I've seen. It's one of the rare times I went somewhere. I was wearing one of my fight hoodies. I was like, oh, you're a fighter? You're an MMA fighter? And I was like, yeah. I was like, how do you know? And I was like, yeah. And I was like, yeah, we all watch MMA and things like that. And I was like, that's so rare, <laughs> uh, especially in the today's saturated era of sports and combat and self-promoters. You know, I could have just been a regular hoodie just for me. But, you know, people was like, oh, yeah, you know, like I follow fighting, things like that. And it's just having a community support behind the sport is so amazing, honestly. It's something that's honestly new. You know, we have our normal support from our teammates and, you know, our friends and families. But actually just having people that you haven't made that established bond and connection with understand or like the sport is, is I, I appreciate it a lot, honestly. 
Yeah. Um, so where are we going now? Like you got this um, uh, three fight deal. Now, was the three fight deal a requirement uh, as far as like signing with them? Or was that something you just felt like the, the timing was right? Uh, so it's, it's a four fight deal and uh, my manager kind of pushed for it. Um, well, you ain't got the brag. You ain't got the brag. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, honestly, we, we think that with the pacing and the the, the kind of the, the level of competition that, that we fought, you know, the only person that's beat me at 125 is the person fighting for the championship for Fury. You know, uh, the matchmakers for 125 and 135 are Fury's basically, uh, I guess, backers. Honestly, you know that they're at a lot of the Fury cards, so on and so forth, and they and they like finishes. And as a pro and amateur, I have almost as a pro, I have 100% finish rate. Amateur, I think it's like a 95% finish rate. So I was like, if we keep on par with this, able to have a good showcase against a higher level of competition, and be able to showcase our skills in front of the people that would do the signing anyway, we think it was going to be for the best. If we can finish all four of these fights. And that puts me at seven and two with a hundred percent finish rate if I can maintain that, and that's what they're looking for. And also on, on my side, it's really difficult to get even matchups or even to get people that won't back out because every time, you know, as, as me and you speak about it all the time, you know, I'm military, and there's lots of times where my schedule really does truly suck. So when I have an open availability where I'm able to kind of dedicate as much time as possible, three to four months or three to six months to a fight or into training and try to take a fight. And then I have an individual pull out or a person that's trying to, not trying to fight. I, I, honestly, that takes years off of my potential, my, my career, because I'm not able to showcase, you know, it's, it's almost like buying good food and putting it in the fridge and let it go to waste. <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not tr- I'm not trying to go to waste in the fridge. So when I have this open availability, I would like to be able to showcase those skills. And they have such a frequent variety of shows i think even in this month alone during the time i'm out here there's literally a show they just had a show yesterday <laughs> they have another one in about another two weeks they have another one two weeks after that another one two, like they literally have fight cards every three to four weeks so for me with the schedule that i have military wise i can find an opening to fit in to be able to give my best version of myself as frequent as i'm possibly able to do and actually have a uh, fight footage because that's been a lot of the issues i've been having I always get set up to, hey, fight this hometown hero in, you know, two days notice. Hey, but, uh, oh, you won. We can't get you any fight footage of that. So it kind of makes it difficult to even promote and advertise myself if I don't have anybody that's even able to record my films and things like that. So I can even break down my own skill set or even to just do some self-promotion. Like for my last few fights, I haven't had quality film. A lot of it's been somebody in the crowd has got the film and, you know, they tagged me or something like that. And I was able to get a snippet of the fight overall. Like, for instance, my last fight, that was one of my best performances overall. It was uh, on a reputable promotion, you know. Uh, they have amazing camera quality, so on and so forth. And it was one of my best showings, and I still can't get the film for that fight, you know. So I was like, hey, you know, it is what it is. It, it happens at times. But being able to know that I can go back and look at that, I can have something I can use for marketing for myself. I have something I can use for my own skill development. And it's just something I can look back on, you know, when I eventually hang it all up, like, hey, you know, this is – my, my work of art. This is my body of work. This is what I've done. How important do you think that um, marketing and promotion side of the game is today for these younger fighters coming up? Honestly, I think it's almost just as important as the fight itself, uh, being honest, because uh, it's, a, it's a business. You know, we, if you want to just see random fights, you can just go on YouTube. Honestly, if we're being honest, and most of the times those videos have more views than our sanctioned, organized and uh, promoted fights, sad to say. But it's because people just, you know, they know where to go to find those. Like if you, you look up street beefs, you see those kind of things because they, you know, those athletes have put so much into uh, whatever athletes, whatever people, those people have put so much <laughs> into <laughs> into no, you know what? promoting advertising that we, we that, got, that we got we got to be fair because like uh, we were talking about this morning, some of those guys are good. Uh, a so lot of those guys be, are good, actually. Yeah, I, it's just that they don't want to go the sanctioned route, uh, maybe because they don't want to go higher than what the status is right now for them. Maybe they don't see the the uh, pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. But whatever it is, they have their motivations for doing what they're doing. So we really should knock it, um, you know, because we may be thinking in terms of what you're doing. It's a higher level competition. It's, a, you know, it's all about greatness, putting yourself out there, because we do know 
once you leave your little circle, that the level starts to step up. And right now with you working with uh, Fury Fighting and, uh, you know, and they're a feeder system, you are stepping up in level. Whether you, whether it's in this fight or the next one, you got, you got four fights to find out what level you are now. <laughs> yeah, you know? I, I, yeah, this is where you kind of see, uh, it's, it's your test as a man. Like, you know, you, you think you're bad, you're going to see how bad you really are. Or like some people say, everybody's a soldier to war happens. So, hey, I threw myself into the war on both sides. <laughs> so we're going to see how this happens. But uh, no, I, those I, guys actually get more views than we do. Um, like, like I said, so I could understand some people, um, they stay with those promotions, build up a following, and then switch over to the regular leagues. Yeah, the only thing that I don't like about the, uh, you know, the, the street beefs is that you build a following to street beefs and you don't exactly see the fighters until, unless they, you know, of course, the, the ones that knock people out, they, they have a following. But um, you, you don't follow the fighter. Uh, street beefs has a thing that reminds me of uh, pro wrestling. People who watch pro wrestling watch pro wrestling. Uh, regardless of the superstars, regardless of the namesake. Um, MMA is a little bit different that when uh, we tend to follow the individuals, you know, um, unless you do what I do where you train fighters and you watch fights to stay on top of the curve, you know, um, you don't really watch MMA like that, you know, um, and, and and I've taken time away from MMA. If, if there was no, no real big main event guy fighting a particular weekend, I'd be like, oh, I'm not going to watch the show unless I had to report on it for some reason. And MMA, it just seems like MMA fans, all of us, we tend to follow our fighters. We don't follow the the league as uh, or the industry as much as we uh, probably should. Um, and I, and uh, I know I will follow a show like one championship if they're doing something spectacular. For me, one championship is all about how they organize their fights with you know, maybe some grappling on it, some kickboxing on it, MMA on it. I'm like, man, I'm curious and I want to see it. But um, as far as uh, as far as MMA, like it used to be, I, I don't follow all of MMA just for the sake of watching MMA. I actually prefer that model because uh, we have these conglomerates, these giants that act like, well, they don't act like, they, they are, <laughs> but in a sense, they have all the marketing power, they have all the, the, they have the, they have all the money, you know, so when we kind of just tune in for an event because it says UFC, because it says Bellator, because it says PFL, we're still putting that money back in their hands, so when you actually start to follow the individual and give more into the individual, it puts more of that m- money, that barking power back into their hands, which is why for the young know, up-and-coming athletes, I'm all for it. The self-promotion. I'm all for the self-advocating because you have to be an entity without the organization. If you need the organization, they don't need you. If that makes honest sense. Yeah, it does. It does. It makes um, a, a lot of sense. Whatever, whatever happened to your podcast? Uh, are you still rocking it? So we are still rocking it. We try to do a bit of a revamp, and uh, things end up kind of falling apart. Uh, sad to say, on that side. So now we're just trying to um, see where the cards lie, re- rebuild, reinvent, because we put a lot into uh, trying to redo the, the major plan that we were trying to do and the pulling the parts out to say. So now we're just trying to pick up the crumbs, put it back together, and see where we can rehash everything. Yeah. Why haven't you um, – I think you know enough now in this game uh, – put some athletes under you to start, you know, building, helping them to get to where they need to go to, but also, you know, like um, maybe not a coaching role because you have been in that role as an instructor, but, um, you know, just working with some guys as a consultant, giving some advice um, and potentially managing them one day. Have, have you thought about that? I, actually, I, I did think into that, uh, especially I had an opportunity that arises itself with my management company. I just kind of, um, honestly, I think I have a lot on my plate right now. And that's kind of the, the truth of the matter. You know, I'm still in school. I just took some time off. But, you know, I'm still in school trying to become a doctor, all that fun stuff. I had to take a step back from that for the Army training. So I figured when uh, everything is said and done, Army-wise, fight-wise a little bit, it's probably not going to die down for a while, which is what I want. <laughs> but uh, I, I told myself probably maybe like another three or four years. You know, I want to see just how high I can actually go 
being a lot more selfish because uh, fi fighting is a selfish sport, you know, as uh, much as we get support from our friends, from our family, so on and so forth. But it is a super selfish sport. And I'm, I'm not even going to pretend when it comes to, <laughs> to that regard. So I'm not, I'm not allowed currently right now to be as selfless as I would like to be. I don't want to do anybody a disservice because right now the focus still needs to be me. You can find the link in the description if you want to hear the rest of this interview. I am Coach Sess, and you've had words with the Mad Coach.